Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. It is an honor to be here with you virtually for this worship experience. I want you to go to the first book of Psalm, the first division of the first book of Psalm, uh, verse number one, the first division of the first book of Psalm, verse number one. And I'll read this into your hearing. Bless the Lord. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And I'm going to be preaching on the next few weeks from uh, this first division of the book of Psalm. But I want to stop there on today and I want to reuse as a topic on today, follow the signs. Follow the signs. Repeat the sermonic prayer with me, Father. Please bless the preacher and the preaching of your word. Bless me to hear, do, and grow in Christ as a result of receiving your word. In Jesus' name, amen. And I am continuing uh, my series on this journey that we have been blessed to take during this year, 2022. The, the, we have been talking about getting, getting mentally fit, We've been talking about being spiritually fit. We've been talking about uh, strength for this journey and, and trusting God that he is going to provide for us daily everything that we need for the journey. But this is also a part of the conditional will that I have been talking about recently where God's will is going to be done only if we hold up our end of the deal. God is going to be God. God is a promise maker and a promise keeper. But the condition to the will is we have to align ourselves. We have to align our thoughts. We have to align our beliefs with the will of God. And, and the easiest way that I can explain to you today, like I said, the acronym KISS, -S, KISS, the easiest way that we can kiss this thing to keep it simple and smart is to simply follow the signs. And I thought it was interesting that the book of Psalm here in, in the first division of the first book gives us clear instruction on how to live a blessed life. And it is up to us and our own self disciplines to align our actions and our wills with the will of of God. Following signs has no, uh, being obedient and following signs have no repercussion. There's no law against following signs, but on the flip side of things, uh, there are consequences that we have to face and consequences that we have to pay when we make the conscious decision not to obey and not to follow signs. You, you are free to do whatever you choose to do. You are free to do you if you want to do you, but there are consequences when you decide to do you over doing uh, the will of God in our lives. So I just want to take a few moments on this Sunday morning. Before I move on, uh, let me wish uh, Sister Penny Dickerson and Brother Larry Dickerson a very happy birthday on today. Amen. Let's wish them a happy birthday. But I want to look uh, very quickly here the importance of following signs. I want to give you uh, some 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 examples on the benefits of following signs and how following signs make life so much simple, how following signs can make things so much easier in your life. Following signs can lower uh, uh, your, your stress levels and make things and, and bring a calm and a peace to your life because, you know, when you're doing the will of God, you know, when you are obeying uh, the signs, when you are obeying the laws of the land, you can you can be in a comfortable place. You can rest easily, easily because you know that there's nothing that you have done wrong and there's no reason to live on edge. And, and I want to look at that on today. Just a minor example that is so simple my, my my goal and my objective on today is just to give you this word in the most simple form that I, I can and you see when you follow signs like I said it makes life 
so much more simple. If you're driving and you see a stop sign, it only makes sense to obey that sign and stop where the stop sign says stop. Remember, we're talking about following the signs. If a sign says stop, then you must stop. If you choose to slow down and yield at a stop sign, there's no need of getting upset at the officer. There's no need of talking about uh, the old uh, NWA song, you know, you know what the police, there's no need of getting angry and upset at them because they're only doing their job. You decided not to stop at the stop sign and now you have uh, to, to deal with the consequences of getting a ticket, amen? And, and this is just a, a small example of what I'm trying to, to, to illustrate to you on today. There's benefits at obeying the signs and, and there's consequences that you have to pay for not obeying the signs. And we're not only talking about street signs, we're not only talking about road signs and do not cross and things of that nature. You also have to have the ability to read people in your life. People will show you signs of who they really are. People will show you signs. They will show you their true colors and it would only benefit you to read the signs that people are showing you in their lives. Let me give you an example. If you got so-called friends and the only time they get in touch with you is when they need something from you. They don't check on you to see how you're doing. They don't see what they can do for you, but it's always what can you do for them. They are showing you a sign and you need to understand and follow and read the signs that they are showing you. There are people that's in your life just to ride on your coattail. There are people in your life with their main objective is to be used by Satan, as we talked about last week, to pull you down, to hold you down and to keep you down. You need to follow the signs that people are showing you. Amen. In sports, in baseball, there are different signs that they use before they pitch the ball that's going to make the play more effective. God is giving you signs here in the book of Psalms. I, I wish I had a dollar for every time I said signs in the introduction, but God is giving us signs to follow in order to live a blessed life. And I'm sure everybody listening on today and the reason why you're listening is because you believe God and you believe that he is a blesser. You believe God and you believe that he is a rewarder of them that what diligently seeks him to live a godly life. We must obey godly signs. If you want to to live for God and, and this is where. There's the line drawn in the sand. If you're going to live for God, choose you this day who you're going to serve. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. And when you make that profession in your faith that you are going to serve God through Christ Jesus, there's just simply some things that you should not do. There's just simply some some places you should not go. I can remember when I was a young child and my mother would sing a song back at uh, Chapel Hill Progressive Primitive, Progressive Primitive Baptist Church in Oregon Hill. And, and the song and the words of the song were, there's been some change, there's been a change in my life. And during the song, she would say, the places I used to go, I don't go no more. And the people I used to see, I don't see no more. Why? Because there's been a change in my life. And, 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 and that is to say that there was one point in my life where I did anything I wanted to do and didn't care about anything or anybody else. But when God laid his hands on me, there was a change in my life and I started obeying the signs of God. And if we look here at the text, blessed, somebody say that with me, blessed. Blessed is the man, blessed is the person that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Understand, God does not judge us according to race. He doesn't judge us according uh, to, to what sex we are. He does not judge us 
according to our origin, meaning it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how you were born. God is not judging you according to these things. God's blessings will result in joy. And if he's not judging us according to how we look, if he's not judging us according to where we come from, is he, he's not judging us according to, to what we have accumulated and the things that we have, then what is he judging us according to? God is judging us according to our obedience in him. God is judging us according to our obedience in him. One more time, God is judging us according to our obedience in him. So what does that mean? We have to follow the signs in our lives that God has placed. Like I said before, it's just like the road signs. Do not cross. Do not enter. Stop. Yield. Uh, green light means go. And all of these signs that we have to follow when we're driving, all of these signs we have to follow when we are traveling, we have to follow these signs in the journey that we are taking. And God is saying some things that we are to do, and he's saying some things that we are not to do. And then today, we're looking at the caution signs. We're looking at these signs that God is saying stop and do not do. This is, this is just for the people who desire the blessings of God in their lives. And remember, the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow. Other translation that I love to, to quote, the blessings of the Lord establishes wealth. Amen. Somebody say that establishes wealth. And it says disappointment is not a part of it. These are, are, are the richness of the blessings that God will shower down upon us if we hold up to our end of the conditions. Amen. Like I said, this is the conditional will of God. So let's break this down for the next several moments and I'll bid you a farewell. When he says blessed is the man, blessed is the person that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. The Hebrew word for blessed is Isha. And it means happiness and contentment. And every time I see uh, this word contentment, when I'm reading the Bible, I cannot help but to go to Paul when he says I've been abased and I've been abound. He says he had to suffer uh, want and he's at, at a point where he didn't have to want for anything at all. And he says in all of these things, he learned how to be content. He learned how to be happy and satisfied in whatever state he was, but the key is he was there in Christ Jesus. Because I understand somebody is saying, well, how in the world can I be happy and content in a poor place in my life? But the answer is, if you are where you are in Christ Jesus, you can, you can, you can rest assured that everything that you're going through is going to work together for your good. Where you are right now, if you are in Christ Jesus. If you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, that if, like I said last week, that is up to you if you decide to be in Christ or not. Amen. You, you're, you're going through some situations on your own right now and it's not working. So why not? I don't know who I'm talking to, but why not try Jesus? Why not give my Jesus a chance? Amen. Why not try something different? If you're doing the same thing the same way, expect the same results. But when you go through in Christ Jesus, I can guarantee you, you're going to come out of it if you allow him to direct your paths. And so the word Isha means happiness and contentment. Amen. It may not be as comfortable as you want it to be, but you can be happy in Jesus. You can be content because you know that trouble is not going to last always. Amen. And when Paul said he had learned to be content, that's when he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God has given you strength for the journey. 
Now, the word is derived from another Hebrew word, Asher. And that is to be straight and upright. Straight and upright. So 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 in Hebraic terms, blessed means to be happy and content and upright before God. You won't be totally happy in your life. You won't experience the totality of joy unless you're content in God, unless you're happy in God, unless you are upright and straight in the eyesight of God. Those are the ones that the Bible say are blessed. These are the ones that the writers say is blessed. The writer is anonymous and this anonymous writer is saying happy and upright, content are the ones who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed and happy and content in life as a result of being right and straight with God. And I, I need to tell somebody that 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 if, if you do what God asks you to do and you do what God suggests you to do and tell you to do and command you to do. He is going to be the God, the person that he said he is. Amen. You don't have to worry about if God is going to hold up his end of the deal or his end of the conditional will. You do what he tell you to do. And then you just sit back and watch God be God. I remember back in my early days in the 80s and the 90s, as we're talking about Asher and being straight up and honest before God. And I can remember back in the 80s and the 90s when we would have conversations and I'd be kicking it with the homeboys or whatever you want to call it these days. And you would make a statement. And if that statement was true, the question would be asked, are you being straight up with me? And the answer would be like, man, I'm straight up. Sometimes you'd be lying. Sometimes you wouldn't. But when you say you straight up, that means you were telling the truth. And this is what Asher is. Uh, if, I, if I could use that in this way, that's what Asher is. You're saying, God, I'm being straight up. God, I'm telling the truth. God, I'm honest. God, I'm naked and unashamed. God, I'm pouring it all out to you. I need you to be here for me. And that's straight up. That's the truth as best as I can tell it. These Hebrew words are actually plural and denotes a multiplicity of blessings or an intense intensification of them. This word is plural. So this means that God is not just going to drop the one blessing on you and move on. But this means God is going to continue to bless you over and over and over and over again. You know, sometimes in the church we say, every time I turn around, God keeps blessing me. That's Asia, because it is a multiplication of blessings that God has given you. So I need to ask you this. I need to challenge you on this. Can't you do these three things that God told you not to do? Can you avoid doing these things that God has told you not to do? For a multiplicity of blessings, for a continuation of blessings. This reminds me of what the early church used to say when they said you cannot beat God's giving. No matter how much you try. I don't care how good you are. God is better. I don't care how great you are. God is greater. I don't care how big you get. God is bigger. Oh, what an awesome God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God. Somebody shout mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. If you're not driving while you're listening to this, I want you to lift your hands up to heaven and I want you to say what a mighty God we serve. And that's straight up. These blessings, as I said before, are not reserved for a certain class of people. That's what I like about the love of God. Is all we 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 are all included. 
We all have a chance. It's not like going to fill out an application to get into a prestigious golf club. All you have to do is obey the word of God. And these plural blessings, this this manifestation of multiple blessings can be yours. I can't stress that enough and I can't make it any 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 easier to understand. Blessed is the person who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, meaning that you are not taking the advice of ungodly people. You have to trust in the word of God. I don't care how good it sounds. Coming from the ungodly, you are not to trust the counsel of the ungodly people. I understand I'm not talking about uh, denominational barriers. The Bible doesn't say don't seek the counsel of the Methodist or the Presbyterian. It said the ungodly. You are held accountable. Of the discerning spirit that God has given you. You should know through your relationship with God. If the counsel is of him or not. The more you read your Bible, the more you have your personal Bible studies, the more of the the virtual services that you watch, the more of the virtual Bible studies that you watch, the closer you get to God through his word. The more you will understand if it's godly counsel or not. I can give you an example uh, from a class that I took here recently. And it was talking about the the, the advantage and disadvantages of godly counsel versus ungodly counsel. And 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 the person who went to counseling, he went to ungodly counsel and 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 he was addicted to pornography. And he went to ungodly counsel first. And I can't understand for the life of me why. But the counselor told him, the ungodly counselor told him to watch as much pornography as he could stand until he got tired of it and wasn't interested anymore. That does not sound right. And if you have an ounce of God in you and you have been convicted of the sins that you're committing There's no way godly counsel will tell you to overindulge in it until you get tired of it. This is an ill and a harm of ungodly counsel. So the first sign is saying, don't walk. You've seen the little signs with the red arrow and the line going through it and the person walking. That's the first sign I want you to visualize. Don't walk. Don't be persuaded with ungodly counsel. And like I was saying before, remember, we are all able to attain these blessings regardless of what class we are, regardless of where we're from. I want you to remember that you are a can you are a candidate of God's blessings when you won first. Don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. The three signs I want to go over and I'll be done. Two left. The signs is don't walk, don't stand and don't sit. Don't walk, don't stand and don't sit. The next one is standing. In the way of sinners. Pastor, what does that mean? That, that, that means that you don't go in the same direction that the sinners are going in. You don't follow the lead of the sinners. It's just like walking, uh, uh, being in the, in the path of the, of the ungodly, the counsel of the ungodly. You don't flow like the sinners flow. There's got to be something different about you when you're blessed by God. We always... Uh, we, 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 we quote Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all of your ways. Acknowledge him and he'll what? Direct your path. 
But the question to you is, and the challenge to you is, when he directs your path, are you going to follow in it? When the word is a lamp on your, to your feet and a light into your pathway, are you going to walk into the light that the word of God is showing you and illuminating in your life? Or are you going to be content with being comfortable and conformed by the world? Be not conformed by the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't walk in the path of sinners. Walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. And I'll close here with the third don't, with the third sign that we are not to follow. And we'll pick up on this again on next Sunday. First sign, don't walk. Second sign, don't stand. Third sign, don't sit in the seat of the scornful. What is the seed of the scornful? The seed of the scornful are those people who are causing deceit in the church. They're causing schisms in the body of Christ. The ones that are always complaining about it doesn't take all of that. The ones that's always complaining about the preacher that know what he's talking about. The ones that's always complaining because sister so-and-so sings too much, too many of the songs in the choir. The ones that's complaining about the deacons praying too long, but you won't pray at all. The ones that are, 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 are complaining about the choir singing the same songs every Sunday, but you won't get up to help them sing at all. The ones that are complaining about how worship is being dictated the ones that are complaining about the praise and the worship and the devotion you only come to church to find something wrong don't sit in the seat of the scornful your purpose in the kingdom is not to point out what's going wrong your purpose in the kingdom is not to judge the other members with 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 the measure of, of judgment. You are not to, to uh, you're supposed to judge with the measure of mercy if you're going to judge. Your job in the kingdom is not to point out everything that's going wrong. Church, I need to say this in closing, but we have to be careful because the church is imploding. The church is blowing up from the inside because there are too many scornful seats in the sanctuary. There's too many people sitting in the seat of the scornful in church. Church is supposed to be a place where we can come and release. Church is supposed to be a place where we can come and build each other up and not tear each other down. The church is headed in the wrong direction in many places. The body of Christ is destroying itself because we are listening to ungodly counsel, because we are standing and agreeing and going along with the sinners because their lives seem to be so much easier because they don't have a code of conduct to go by. If you don't believe in sin, then, then there is no sin. Sin, believe, sin depends on what you believe. And if you don't believe in God, if you don't believe in Christ, well, if they don't believe in God and they don't believe in Christ, then they cannot lead you beside the still waters. Amen. They cannot allow you to lie down in green pastures. If you Follow a sinner. The only place he can lead you to is a burning hell. So don't stand in the path of the sinners. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. This is something that I've been saying uh, for the last 11 years. Learn how to shut up. You don't have to share your opinion on everything that you see that you don't like. And everything that you don't like, just because you don't like it, doesn't mean it's wrong. Just because you don't understand it, doesn't mean it's wrong. 
Now let's go back a little bit. And now I understand the spirit of discernment. The discerning spirit will let you know what's right and what's wrong, but you don't have to always speak on it. There's a such thing as keeping your opinion to yourself for the greater good of the church. And all of you getting, get understanding. You know, you, the, we, we could be praying and having praise and worship and everybody's feeling good, but you may see such a so-and-so sitting on the side and she's not clapping her hands and she's got a bad look on her face. And, and it's not your job to point out or assume that she has the devil in her because she's not worshiping the way you do. You don't know what she's been through to get here. You don't know what she dealt with to get here. So maybe if, if, if your praise and worship was earnest and true, you know, maybe the fire will spread over to her. Or maybe you could just come and put your hand on her back and, and just pray for her. Or maybe you could just pray from your own seat, especially during COVID. But the thing is, church, we have to stop judging each other by what we see on the outside without knowing what's going on on the inside. People struggle. Saved people struggle. Saved people struggle. From the pulpit to the back door. We have our issues. We have our good days and our bad days. If I, if I, if I could sing, and I'm not going to, but we all know the song, I won't complain. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I don't know all the words, but sometimes the clouds hang low. There are going to be some times where I'm feeling good and there's going to be some times where I'm not feeling as good. Don't judge me. Don't judge others by the things that you see with the natural eye. Church, let's get back to praying for one another. Let that be the first response. We're all a part of the first response team. Let that be the first response to pray for one another. Some of us can't pray for one another because we're too busy trying to find out why and what's going on, when, what, why, how. Let's stop doing that and let's let our first instinct to be to pray for them. You see something that doesn't look uh, this, uh, normal with someone, just pray for them. Just pray for them. A little silent prayer. God help them. Sit not the seat of the scornful. When we stand not in the paths of, uh, we stand not in the paths of sinners. I just wanted to go over a few verses and we'll sit down. Because in Matthew 7 and 13, it says, Wide is the gate and broad is the way that lead to destruction. Wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. That's when you're following the path, standing in the path of the sinner. I want to go back to that because it's important. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. This is not a scripture, but freedom is a road seldom traveled by the multitude. Another verse I want to leave with you before uh, I give the benediction. Psalm 16 and 11, you will show me the path of life. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. And your right hand pleasures forevermore. Why did I want to read those two scriptures even after I was done? Because one is telling you that if you follow and stand in the path of sinners, you're headed to a Definite destruction. But on the other hand, when God shows you the path of life, you will have the fullness of joy and, and, and peace forevermore. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for the word today. I pray, Heavenly Father, that your word would edify the church. Help us in our everyday life. Help us on this daily journey. Help us, Lord, when things get difficult, that we can lean and depend on your word. God, let your presence be with us. 
Help us and give us strength. Help us to be obedient to the signs, where to walk, where to stand, and where to sit. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forever. Let us all say amen and amen. God bless you.